Welcome to the Reimagine Podcast. Each week, give yourself 30 minutes and meet the people working hard to create the future of insurance today. As it happens, it's almost a reality series, but not quite. So, Laura, do you want to talk about our, our guests, introduce our guests and uh, the topic of our the problems we'll explore today? Sure. Thanks so much. As Paul mentioned, we are in episode four of this special series, uh, exploring the individuals behind Talent Bridge 23. So it's an interesting opportunity for us to work with everyone. So we wanted to share their stories here with you in the podcast. Today with us, we have Bobby Shirstov. She is co-founder and COO of Benakiva. She is a voice you've heard on this podcast before. So we are excited to have Bobby. We have Amit Unde, Vice President and CTO of Insurance at LTI Mindtree. And we have Jingyu Chen, an InsurTech fellow within the program. So thank you all for being with us here today. Bobby, let's let's start with you. Um, you know, you're you're a face that Hartford has been blessed with for a few years now. Um, you are graciously involved in the Talent Bridge 23. Please tell our listeners, for those who may not know you yet, who who are you and what what work do you do? So hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Laura and Paul, for the invitation. Bobby Shrivastav, uh, uh, I'm one of the founders and COO of Benikiva, and what we do uh, in the industry is we're solving for the life annuity health products, the claim, the claim problem, the claim experience problem. And our mission is how do we make the claim process a claimant first focus? So whether that's a beneficiary in the life side, whether that's a policyholder in the disability side, and we live and drive, live and breathe through that vision of how do we make it seamless, streamlined for the claimant. Yeah, and I'll just jump in a quick question: claims as a problem. Can you can you size this for me? Like, I don't know how many claims, how much money. What? How, how big is claims uh, as a a business for the insurance industry? So a couple of statistics, Paul, uh, that when we launched our company back in 2018, we were coming at it from there are going to be claims that are going to be paid out. But the problem that we were gravitating towards was this unclaimed property. And if you look at that, uh, back in 2018, that size was about um, 14 billion claims that were unclaimed. And that number kept on incrementally increasing by $1 billion a year. So when you look at why that issue occurs and when you try to peel the onion, so a couple of statistics, statistics that we came across were, well, may, the beneficiary doesn't even know that they are the recipient of the claim. Then we came across the statistic about um, an average cycle time of a claim is anywhere from, uh, in some scenarios, 30 days if you're having a good day and if you're an organization that keeps up with that, to all the way to 183 days if you're looking at annuity claims. So as we started to peel the onion, we have captured different statistics. One of the statistics, Paul, you liked is like the average of 4% of claims that go out the door, come back into the organization, which means 96% of claims that go out, they go out and never the, it never comes back to the organization. So a lot, it's a huge market when we, especially when you look at it from just, not just from a claims perspective, but also claims to revenue perspective. Yeah, that's, that's fascinating. And we can dive in there more. Amit, for our listeners, please introduce yourself and talk a little bit about the work that you do. First of all, thank you, Paul and Laura, for having me. And uh, my name is Amit Unde. I'm a CTO for Insurance Business Unit for LTI Mindtree. Uh, I lead what we call as the Insurance Strategy and Advisory Group, which is responsible for consulting business solutions that we develop, as well as a partner uh, ecosystem that we are building. So we are actively seeking out uh, Bobbies of the world who are innovating uh, 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 insurance industry, they have solutions that our clients can use. And uh, basically, my role is to make those introductions to clients to this insured text and uh, help them solve the problems together. Right. So that that's what primarily I do. 
Yeah, that's fascinating. And, and relationships building is a lot of what we focus on here too. So excited to dive deeper into that piece of it. And our next uh, guest on the show here, Jing Yu, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your involvement in Talent Bridge 23. Oh, yes. Uh, actually, I'm an um, extreme science student, major and uh, major at UConn, and I'm so glad uh, to participate in insurance, uh, insurance tech fellow programs working with Biogloss this semester. And uh, uh, the same as Ben uh Spyglass also do a lot of uh, service for uh, life insurance and so on. And yeah, uh, this is my first time to participate in like insurance tech fellow programs, and I can I think I can get more and more experience uh, for this program. Thank you. And, and Ching Yu, t- tell us about your journey. Um, I, um, I have a feeling you were not born in in Hartford, Connecticut. What, oh I, yes, I'm a Chinese. I'm a Chinese, and uh, uh, actually, I have traveled a lot of uh, different places. Uh, like uh, when I was an under, undergraduate student, I study. I, I do my study in Taiwan, not in the China mainland. And after that, I uh, uh, traveled to the U.S. like last year. So yeah, it's my first time to come to the U.S. and. Uh, uh, like experience a different culture. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating. And it's, it's one of the reasons why we like these conversations because we get to meet individuals who have various backgrounds and kind of bring those pers- perspectives to the table. Um, something that was said by a few of you in your introduction stood out to me. So a lot of it comes down to connection and ecosystem, right? And it's, you know, Bobby's in the front lines. She's doing the work that's helping to transform. I mean, like, like yourself, we're helping to connect these individuals inside of companies to either create change or at least to um, expose understanding of what's out there in the world. I guess to dive in on the theme of, of mentorship, you know, it looks different for everyone and every mentorship is unique in itself. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about mentorship in your journey thus far? Have you been mentored? Um, you are a mentor for this program, so we appreciate your participation in that way. But what what has your journey been like? Well, yeah, yeah. No, I, I was very fortunate to get many mentors throughout my my career. Uh, I came to U.S. like 20 years ago and when I came here, I was pure technologist and had no sense of business whatsoever. So I was in my code and development, and that's the world that I knew. Uh, my mentors um, uh, taught me ins and out of business. They taught me sales. They taught me marketing. And they basically helped me build the career that I have now. Right. So I owe a lot of my success and my happiness to my mentors. And I, I also got an opportunity to mentor many of the very uh, very phenomenal people uh, throughout my journey as well. Uh, and every time I mentor someone, I refine my own skills, whether it's a technical or whether business skills, right? So I, I kind of benefited more than them. Um, and also I made this lifelong connections with uh, with all these mentees with, who are very successful now. So it's like you mentioned, right? Connection is always an asset to have. And I have so many assets and because of the, uh, mentorship that I have done formally, informally. So uh, throughout my journey, I kind of benefited from both the sides, mentor helping me and mentees also helping me. Uh, uh, it's, 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 it, mentorship is so, has been so important for all of us. I think if we um, re- reflected back on what led us to the point we are in our career today, how did you establish your relationships with mentors, how many of them were planned? You know, it was a, a match in a program with a mentor. How many of them were accidental? And um, what, what's the secret to keeping a mentorship, you know, going over an extended period of time? So in my case, um, none of that was planned or formal uh, mentorship. As such. I wish that was there at that time, but it was not. And um, so I was kind of fortunate to find those mentors uh, who were my bosses, who were my colleagues, uh, who basically took me under their wings, right? And um, they decided to uh, help me out and give that mentorship to me uh, in a more informal ways. Now, nowadays, now we are planning formal mentorship to some of um, our, our, our resources and our uh, team members, right? Because 
I know the importance of that now, but at that time we didn't have any formal program like this, which you know, which I think it's a really great program. Um, but I accidentally discovered those mentors uh, and I got benefits from them. So uh, it happened, which is I'm very fortunate for that. Yeah, and, and Bobby, obviously building a, a startup requires an amazing amount of connections, relationships, uh, you know, people holding their hand out. How do you think about the the journey of I'm a, I'm a contact to I'm a friend to I'm a mentor to maybe I'm an advisor, maybe I'm on your board. Maybe talk to us a little bit about how you think about um, levels of, of connection support. Yeah, um, Paul, uh, um, I'll, uh, I just want to piggyback off what Amit's been talking about, right? Like, it is so important, uh, the power of mentors, especially uh, as part of your early career days. So, I mean, I really, honestly, if I look at my startup journey, I may not have even been at this lens if it hadn't been for my career mentors that some of them were planned, some of them were accidental. You saw, you seeked out. Uh, I know our organization, when I worked at a fairly large Fortune 500 organization, they always encourage you to seek out mentors. And, and, it's, and it's what I know there has been a mentor or two that have had such a big impact in my whole journey, and it's the lessons that they've taught. So as you come from a startup lens, you're going to you're going to be in that scenario where you you know I've been very fortunate that I've always gravitated towards startup communities but that also came through accident too because initially if you're not part of the startup community you have no idea what you're doing so when we first started our in my first company we actually built a solution and then we were thinking, hey, is there a community that we can reach out to? We would go to like our local tech meetups. And it was fortunate that we met an individual that led up our startup community in Winston-Salem. And I saw him in the parking lot and I said, I have a company I've built. I've got a product, a tech product I've built. I want to, I want to get in front of you. T tell me like, what do I need to do? And that's the start, that's spearheaded like our startup journey where you learned about the lean canvas methodology, the, you know, the business canvas and you have, you know, there were so much support around it. So oftentimes, you know, we've been fortunate that, you know, I started my startup journey back in 2015 when these ecosystems were just being built out, but now they're flourished and across every city, every town has some type of a startup community go participate. And that that's what helped us. And I'm a big proponent of when you, especially in a startup world, you're going to accelerate through that. And you're going to quickly learn that as you go through each phase of your startup, you're going to need mentors. And it's also, you need to give back to the other founders who are just starting out. So that cycle continues where you're mentoring, but you're also getting mentored, but it's at a different level. And it cycles through. I never want to hear a startup founder or anybody that says, "Oh, I'm, 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 uh, I don't need a mentor." Because in my world, in my lens, the minute you say that, it just shows that you're you're kind of shut down your learning. You always need a mentor, whether that's professional, whether that's personal. So when you seek out mentors, Bobby, it sounds like in the beginning you identified the individual and you found him in the parking lot and you, you ran over and you said, this is who I am. This is what I need. How can I get in front of you? For a piece of advice for individuals starting out, whether they're a startup, a student, anywhere in between in their career journey, do you look for mentors based on title? Do you look at them based on talent? Do you look at them? How would you, how would you look for a mentor, right? Because we all, we all need different things. Um, and sometimes I, I feel like in, in companies, people feel as though unless an individual has a title of a certain level, well, hmm, it may not be worth it. But those of us who believe in mentorship know that mentorship comes at every single level from every single person. We have something to learn. What advice would you give someone seeking a mentor? How do they identify somebody? 
And, and Laura, you bring up such a great point because I was just having a conversation with the startup founder on he was, he's looking and he's getting his mentors, mentors lined up and I'm one of his advisors. And I was just giving him some pr good practices and some watch outs, like here's what to watch out in a mentor. They say some of these things run away. <laughs> so Personally, Laura, I look at it from a holistic lens. So I never look at titles. That's just never been my thing. I always look at the experience, their knowledge, and what what experiences they bring to the table. So earlier on in my in my startup world, tech, how do we do product development? I already had that skill set, right? So I was looking at gaps. Where are the areas that I have gaps? And I had gaps in sales. I had gaps in marketing. I had gaps in commercialization. Like, how do you price it? And I would reach out to multiple individuals because it's always good to get different perspectives. And I would reach out to a small business owner. I would reach out to a large enterprise just to get that breadth of experience and breadth of their expertise because they're coming at it from a different point of view. So that's how I seek out a mentor. To me, titles don't mean anything. Honestly, the uh, like when we were building out our claim solution, our mentors were the claims examiners because their voice was so much more important. How they tackled the challenges was just as much critical than the CEO because the CEO sometimes, as we know in our operations world, they're a bit far removed from the actual day to day. So we needed to find people that actually are doing that those processes and they may not have the sexy titles, but they helped us through our journey. And we always recognize those individuals when we can. Some of the watch outs would be <laughs> if, if somebody is coming to you from a mentorship point of view, and if they tell you, well, my mentorship ends here, my paid engagement starts here, those are watch outs. Because to be honest with you, when you're mentoring, the, uh, you can you can turn if they are looking for something that's a little bit more consultative, actual work work. That's a different conversation than mentoring. You can't really start a mentorship and end a mentorship based on the advice I'm going to give. My, you know what I'm saying. So those are those are going to be some watchouts of mentors to look for. You know to look out for because that's that's just blending in too much of what your self-interests are versus, you know, I'm always looking at what I can do to serve the other person, not what they could do to help me, right? So I come at it from a different lens. Amit, you, you work with some very senior people across a number of very different um, uh, industries. Do you ever get to a point in your career, though, where you're more providing mentorship and not needing it? Uh, do your do you, do the CIOs you work with need mentorship just as much as uh, as uh, Jing, you might may need it out of college? Absolutely. I mean, I, I believe like I agree with Bobby completely that everybody needs mentorship, right? And uh, and it need not be more learned, more experienced person who teach you, right? Because many times the youngster like Jing, you may teach me uh, something about technology, something about uh, maybe her, her her world in China which I may not know, right? So it is not that you need a more experienced person, although it is always good to have that kind of a person. I think what makes uh, such kind of engagement very successful is if we have a mutual respect, mentor and mentee both, and both are in it to learn from each other. And uh, a second is that mentor needs to have time for mentee, right? So many times I see that if we seek out people who are very, uh, high level, their CEOs, their presidents, and they may be well intentioned, but uh, they may not have time for you, right? Because they are busy. So those mentors may not be, uh, they, they may be good connections, but they may not be your mentors, right? So your mentors need to be someone who can spend time with you, who is passionate in helping you, right? And, and you would find those individuals in the uh, market who, uh, who basically be happy by helping someone. So I, yeah, I kind of seek out those uh, those kind of mentors in whenever I meet CIOs, CXOs, and many of them became my friends. They became my mentors because they were genuinely interested in it. And uh, and I believe I also kind of helped them in certain areas where they needed help as well. 
Yeah, it's it's helpful, right? So when we look at things and and try to get an understanding of what will make a successful relationship, um, you know, the intent, right? As you mentioned, it's people want to want to be mentored <laughs> and mentee on both sides. I'm going to flip the question a, a little bit, um, Jing Yu. You know, what is what's one thing that you hope to get gain from this as you're going through your educational journey? Um, you know, what is one piece of information, knowledge, or advice you hope to receive? from a mentor during this program? Mm, actually, the first thing is that I believe it's really a good opportunity to learn about the insurance hack through the series program because I can uh, not only apply this, uh, all the theoretical knowledge I've learned from a course and uh, apply it to the real insurance world. And also, um, let, let's take to uh, measure about a mentor because, um, like before, especially in China, uh, most of our, our students, they just like listen to a professor's um, lecture. They do not find uh, their own mentor or they do not, uh, they do not know about uh, everything about the work, especially if they, if they want to transfer their roles from students to a worker or um, to find a job in the real insurance world, they would say that. Oh my God! What should I do? And uh, yeah, they need a mentor, and they will like uh, not only know about uh, what kind of job they should do in their uh, everyday daily life. Also, they want to know like how can we uh, correctly communicate with their colleagues, with their bosses, or with, with yeah something like that with their clients. It's a big question because uh, most of the students only like take courses and uh, just ask questions about their lecture. So yeah, I think from this program, I can uh, get the mentorship, uh, one on one mentorship to improve my skill in both in communication, also like uh, gain experience for of uh, working with a company. Yeah. Uh, uh, Amit, first of all, th thank you so much for uh, helping sponsor this program. Um, what does LTI Mindtree hope to get out of uh, pro working with a program like this? Yeah, I'm actually very excited about this program because it is it is kind of one of its kind, right? I have not seen such kind of program before because you you have insured techs at one side, you have a fresh talent at one side, and, and both the things we are actively seeking out. As a, as a company, right? We need we need talent uh, to support our growth. We need partners, uh, uh, insurtech partners, to basically help provide innovative solutions to clients. So this is kind of a perfect program where we help that breed. And so I'm very excited because we we both the sides uh, we we have uh, challenges. We were looking for resources to help us make those connections, get that talent. So talent bridge program kind of helps in both the sides. So uh, it, is, it is a perfect program for us to sponsor and be actively part of. It also helps us uh, uh, be part of this Hartford community as well, right? The, that uh, ecosystem that we are talking about. We are uh, actively investing in Hartford area. Uh, we have office, we have about 400, 500 employees working in this area. So having that ecosystem here, uh, uh, having mentors uh, like yourself uh, with us, uh, uh, like Bobby, having partners like Bobby's with us, like talent like Zingu with us, we need all that. So this is a kind of a really perfect program for us to uh, invest in. Yeah, that's great. And we're, we're happy to hear it. We're excited about the opportunity. And Bobby, one thing that um, came up is, you know, the world of insurance. And as we all know, Hartford, Connecticut is the insurance capital of the world. I don't want to hear otherwise from anywhere else. Um, why why Hartford, Bobby? I mean, you've invested a lot of time here. You could be doing business development elsewhere. You could be mentoring um, students and, and the like anywhere in the world. What does Hartford mean to you and why do you keep coming back? Well, I keep coming back because I absolutely love the ecosystem that you guys have built. I think it's so warm it's it's uh, welcoming uh, you guys give us the opportunities and you know when laura when you asked you know shared this is the program 
you know, are you interested? I think within seconds, I'm like, I'm in <laughs> because uh, it's a, it's a way to explore additional opportunities too. So as we grow and expand our organization, we're looking at placing the folks in, in hubs, right? Within the U S. So, you know, we've got, you know, our headquarters are in Des Moines. So we've got a hub there. I, you know, we built a hub in North Carolina because selfishly I lived there. So it made sense. And now what we're trying to do is evaluate hubs like Hartford so that we can expand the team. So when we uh, have the opportunity to do participate, it really opens our perspective, right, to, to what's available. So the startup ecosystem, you know, partners like, you know, we've, ta- we've been in conversations with LTI and the college community is more, it's so important that we get the talent and we get visibility to that talent because as an organization, you you can only scale as good as your people. And you and no matter how good your technology is from a scalability perspective, you still need good human capital, good talent folks. And what we're finding is we're finding this really rich, we're wanting to explore this rich talent pool in Hartford so that we can grow and scale our organization. That's why I come, keep coming back. Unless you guys tell me not to come, <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, and you've actually hired people here in the Connecticut market, correct? Yeah, I know one, one person, right? Yeah, yeah. and we're, uh, you know, we're, uh, we, we're looking at sales capability too, Paul. Uh, that's our next, next area of growth. Uh, so our marketing is in, in, is in Hartford. Our sales, we're looking at uh, resources that are in the Hartford region. Because one of the things that we've learned is, especially even in the B2B market, you just have to have people in the ground. So if you do get the calling, how can we be, how can we activate that, that workforce? The big piece, Paul, that I'm excited about is exploring the partner network as well. Because we've got a couple of partners that are based out of Hartford. They've made investments in Hartford and, and it's exciting to be part of that journey as a, from a partnership perspective with some of these large organizations. I love it. That's great. So in our last few minutes here, I'm super curious. Um, Amit, let's start with you. If if I'm a student and I'm listening to this podcast and I'm interested in potentially working for LTI Mindtree or any organization in Hartford, what is one piece of advice you would give to a college student to help help them in that application process? How do they become from one student into someone that that an organization would want to speak with? What are a few things that they could do along their journey? So what we we are looking at is more, more about fitment, right? It's a, uh, not just technology fitment, but also cultural fitment and uh, looking for talent who wants to build a career in insurance industry, who are really passionate about it. And then uh, they want to be here for a longer term, right? So many times we see that many students, uh, they, uh, they look for a shorter term engagement. So they look for more, whether I'm going to get a project in this particular technology and they're not looking at how this firm can help me build my career. Right. Mm -hmm. So we would, uh, uh, encourage students to look for that, um, that whether this is a firm that will help you, uh, uh, for next 10 years or for next five years, right? It's a longer term, whether they are going to build your career or not, and not just look at momentarily what kind of compensation I'm getting or what kind of a project I'm getting, because that is, that is just for that particular time where you have to look for a longer term horizon and, and whether you are going to get long main, right mentors also in this organization that will help you build your career. Right? So, uh, thinking a little bit longer term is, is what I would recommend to students. Bobby, it was it was great to see you at ITC. I, I will tell you, it was interesting to look at your booth now versus what it was a couple of years ago. Simple question to you. Are you still a startup? And if not, when did you cross that line? How did you know it? You know, that <laughs> that question always comes to our mind. Honestly, I think uh, for us, you know, I think the minute you start to get scale, you've got to get, get out of that startup mentality. You know, you've got to, you know, got to have standard process, standard procedures. But I think 
I mean, every organization is different, right? Like every startup, when they feel like when, when you're no longer, can you call yourself a startup? But what I would say is it's the, it's not even about the startup is about innovation, right? Like at what point do we stop innovating? And our answer is never. So that means we're going to always operate as a startup mentality, um, have that hustle and grind to really solve industry issues. We will never, we will never be that, right? We will never be the, the organization that stops investing in our tech because we can go and build something else and let this be stabilized. You know, we're, we're not about that. We're about solving real problems and we're going to leverage our platform to do that. Um, so I don't have the answer for that, Paul. I think that answer is better than any answer that Paul was expecting. <laughs> if I could drop this microphone on the floor and not break it, I would. Um, but you know, I got to respect the equipment. So we are we are at the top of the hour. Um, I, I want to thank you all for coming on and speaking with us today about your journey here with Talent Bridge and your own personal journeys with mentorship. It's something that's extremely valuable um, on both sides. And, and for me, I, I like having mentors of different variety, um, different levels, different backgrounds. Because admit to your point earlier, you know. You know, even if someone can teach me about their culture, their traditions, that's something that's going to make me, you know, interested and curious. As a, a lifelong learner, there's never, um, never an end, and that's a beautiful thing. So, like Bobby, I hope to keep innovating, keep learning, and keep moving it forward. Paul, as we wrap up here, is there anything you want to leave the audience with at the top of the uh, top of the time? No, I, I'm just excited to see uh, what happens and what what uh, connections. Uh, are made in this program, meet Jingju, uh, Bobby. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, our, our next conversation with uh, another another pair of uh, startup students and, and uh, industry leaders here in Hartford. So, listen, thanks for joining us. Uh, tune in again next week for another special episode of the Reimagine Podcast. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and recommend us on iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more great information about this company and other great startups at imagine.nfg.com.